When was this, Sally? Oh, dear. All right, I'll tell him. Right. Leave us coming along as soon as he's cleared up in his office. So with Mrs. Thurgood and myself, that gives us enough for a quarrel. Where the devil is she? She's gone, Sir Charles. What? Gone home. It's past six o'clock. I should hardly have thought that one was stuck to office hours at a time like this. She's had a pretty heavy day, you know, sir. But well, haven't we all? Haven't we all? But Mrs. Thursday's not quite so used to the close-in fighting of a major takeover bid as the other directors. She's a bit out of her depth in all this, sir. It is perfectly simple. A one for three bid for their orders, plus nine and six cash. And 55 shillings for seven and a quarter percent unsecured convertible loan stock 1982-85. Now, there's no difficulty there, sure. Well, no, Sir Charles. Well, Hunter. Uh, very well, thank you, Sir Charles. I wasn't inquiring about your health, ma'am. Where's the chairman? You're supposed to be her business advisor, aren't you? Uh, yes, Sir Charles, but hardly her guardian angel. Gone home, has she? She left about an hour ago. We've been jousting with reporters all day. I told her what to say to that lot. Everybody told her what to say. When she saw them gathering outside like vultures, she just couldn't take any more of it and slipped out through the stuffing. Well, ask her to come back, will you, Hunter? I want an ad hoc board meeting. But, Mr. Hunter! The rate tax and shares are rising. If we don't get our offer in right away, it'll look ridiculous. She's not at home. What? She went there, according to Sally, but she found another bunch of reporters at the front door. Uh, why didn't she wait for me? What did she say to them? She invited them all in. Offered them a cup of tea, I dare say. In the kitchen. Oh, Mrs. T. And once she'd got them all in there, she slipped out by the back door and gave them all the slip. Well, she's learning. Where's she going? She didn't say. Didn't say? Sally saw her getting into a taxi. Unfortunately, the reporters saw her too. They may know where she is, but Sally doesn't. This is unbelievable. Here we are, about to go about the heads of the Haxton board and put our offer to the shareholders direct. The climax of weeks of delicate negotiations, millions at stake, and where in heaven's name is our chairman? One six, three sixty. Seven six, was she worth it? Seventy six. All the threes, thirty three. Come on, come on. Oh, Lord, now I've dropped my pencil. All the fives, fifty five. Uh, fifty five, I'm sure I have that. Come on, knock on the door, that's all I want. One past eight, number eight. Eight? I had that too. Here, use mine. Oh, thank you, madam. I'm really most extremely grateful. Well, cross them out then. Fifty thousand eight. Ah, number eleven, ladies eleven. Oh, you got that too. You won. Won? Shout it out. Bingo. Oh, good gracious, what's ever happened? You won. I have? Yes. Oh, you're a proper innocent, aren't you? This is the first time you've played. Yes. Oh, look, you haven't filled in the back of your book. Got your guest ticket there. Oh, just a minute, dear. I think mean, it's his first time, see? That's it. Now your card, they've got a white one back for checking. Oh, good gracious me. What would I have done without you? Thank you. I've got one claim from the balcony. Now, are there any more before we start the check? There's two more down here. Oh, look, there's two more down there. Oh, what's three cent to 24? Uh, eight. Oh, you've only won eight pounds then. What a shame. A oh, shame? Oh, believe me, madam, I can do with eight pounds all right. Who uh, can't these days? Well, yeah, it's not like 24, though, is it? Now, I never look a gift horse in the mouth, madam. Eight pounds, whatever next. I'm sure you could do with it yourself, couldn't you? And I've got you to thank for it. If it hadn't been for you... Now, well, you see, you can't afford to mess about. I can't. It don't count Two. if they call the next number Five. before you shout. See that notice up there? If you have a house, shout loud enough to please Twenty-five. Them. In front of all these people? <laughs> I feel such a jackass. Very uh, Is uh, that my card 35. they're calling out? Oh, well, they've got to make sure it's not a bogey, see? Bogey? Well, that you haven't made a mistake. What made you come in tonight if you've never played before? Well, I was just passing, and I'd often wondered what these bingo places were, so I said to myself, look, let's drop in and have a go. And why not, for heaven's sake? I used to play bingo every Tuesday one time, regular as clockwork. Not here, of course. I don't know anyone at all here. Well, anyone can see that you're an expert. Oh, oh yes, thank you, young yes, lady. The next card, get ready. It's the accumulator now. Uh, where do I get the, um... Oh, at that desk down there. But I'll show you afterwards. Uh, well, perhaps you'd join me for a little celebration later. Oh, well, I don't know about that. Oh, well, I've you to thank for my good fortune, and dash it all, it isn't every day that one comes into money, is it? No. 
Not every day. I shall for four hours. Oh, what does it matter? Algy Haxton's been deliberately spreading false hopes about our intentions just to jump up the price of his shares and discourage acceptance of our present offer. Well, we can't raise it anymore, can we? No, Sir Charles. Not a penny. Uh, not a farthing. All the same, if those shares of theirs do go any higher tomorrow... Oh, excuse me. Yes? What's that? Oh, what on earth gave me that idea? Press think the whole deal's off. Oh. She's what? My dear fellow, at a time like this, the chairman of the group is hardly likely to... You saw go in. Draw what conclusion you like. She's playing bingo. What did you say? Ten million pounds of her own, and she's out there batting for the weekly accumulator. Bingo. <laughs> Archer Street. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, next door to a sweet shop. Uh, what was the name of it now? Um... Mrs. Parker's. Yes, that's the one. Holmar Parker's. They don't make toffee like hers nowadays. Well, i never. It's all these uh, fancy flavors and hygienic wrappings. Where's the goodness in it? That's what I want to know. Oh, well, you don't catch me anchoring out to the old days. Lose a couple of bob and the old family had to suffer. No, but they made us what we are. People like us, brought up in a hard school. We know the value of things. We know what really counts in life. True enough. An honest do a day's toil and a good bread pudding for your supper at the end of it. <laughs> what more can a man want? No, not for supper. It's too heavy on your stomach late at night. You don't like bread pudding? Oh, of course I do. When my Bert was alive... Oh, it does be good to hear you now. Come on, let's have that drink we promised ourselves. Oh, no, really. We won't catch a bus for ages with all these crowds and the old bell next door still serves a good jug of ale. Well, it's ever so good of you, but... Uh, Mrs. Percy! No, I insist, madam. You don't know what it's like to be rich. And if I can't afford to buy you a drink... Do you mean anything, Mrs. Percy? Does, does this mean the takeover's not going ahead after all? I mean, you wouldn't be out here... Hey, hey, give, give me the quote, Mrs. Percy. Do you mind? Give me the quote. Tell us what's happening. Oh, excuse now. me. Yes, give me the Come along, Mrs. T. Quick. Bates has got the road. Oh, oh, is there going to be... Excuse me. 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 Excuse me.
Now, look, Sir Charles, you never even said you was wanting a meeting. Oh, all right, Jean, thank you. But it was just those blessed reporters. I couldn't take it anymore. They never let up. Chase you from here to kingdom come. You can't pull the wool over my eyes, Mrs. Thursday. No, George Dunwich knew what he was doing when he left you in charge, didn't he? Eh? Dunwich go cold on Haxton's. It is now widely assumed in city circles that no offer is imminent, after all, from the Dunwich group. Why not? When the chairman is seen out playing bingo. In all my experience of city manoeuvring, I've never seen such a brilliant move. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Charles. His Haxton shares have been marked down already. Of course, they'll rise again when we put in our offer. But they won't reach the level they touched yesterday. Mm. Uh, there's not much you and I can teach Mrs. Thursday as the hunter. Of course not, Sir Charles. Thought you might like to read this, Mrs. T. Your friend Budge applied for a job here. Oh, yes, Sir Charles. Mrs. Thursday can look after herself all right. And us. No one can ever take her in. Come in, an unexpected honour. Well, I've called, Mr. Budge. Just, just one or two things I want to get straight. Pray step this way. Not the most um, salubrious accommodation, I'm afraid, but uh, home is what you make it, don't you think? A few of your own bits and pieces is all well, one needs. I to... didn't come here for a chat, Mr. Budge. I'd just like you to listen to me for a few minutes. Oh, please sit down. Now, you followed me into that bingo hall last night, didn't you? To see if you could talk me into giving to you that job you were after. I'm just the sort of man they want. You think so? Unfortunately, my experience in this field has been somewhat restricted of late, owing to the fact that the last six months I have been in, in, um, in, uh, in, incarcerated in one of Her Majesty's prisons. Is that the honest truth? It's hardly the sort of thing one would want to make up, Mrs. Thursday. Well, hardly the sort of thing one would want to own up to. What did they put you away for? I absconded with some 500 pounds of my employer's money. In one frightening, appalling moment of weakness, I pinched it from the safe. As an assistant cashier, I had the keys. Assistant cashier? A responsible post. The very job you're after here. The identical job. Yes. Why? Well, you expect them to give you the same job again? Well, it's the only job I know, Mrs. Thursday, and I'm very good at it. Now, uh, you look at all the experience I've had. 